The Passover menu. The Passover menu. Lamb or goat, unleavened bread, bitter herbs. Congregate with fellow believing Israelites, meaning that they're not a heathen who doesn't care about the Bible or the truth or God at all, right? They need to be Israelites in the truth. And with your families, it is very important that your wives and children be taught the meaning of Passover. Read the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse verses three through four. The Passover meal consists of lamb or goats, the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse five, bitter herbs, unleavened bread, the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse eight, and wine, the book of Matthew chapter 26, verses 18 through 19 and 26 through 29. Now how the Passover meal is to be prepared. The lamb or goat must be roasted with fire. The book of Exodus chapter 12, verse nine, Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, meaning the lamb or goat must not be cooked in water with season, but roast with fire, his head with leg, with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. The lamb or goat must be cooked or roasted whole, because the bones are not to be broken. The book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 46. If it is possible that you can fulfill the scripture, scriptures, then do so. If not, then get the meat in small pieces. The book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 11. And roast the Passover. For the unleavened bread, matzos can be used. For the bitter herbs, any plant in the lettuce family can be used. The last thing is the wine. If the Passover falls on, on the regular Sabbath, Friday to Saturday, sundown, then it must be cooked on that day to, be, to keep the Passover. The ordinances state that the Passover meal must be prepared on that day. Cooking is allowed. The Passover service have a small service beginning and ending with the reading of the Lord's Prayer. The book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13. Read the scriptures pertaining to the Passover. The book of Leviticus chapter 23, verses 5 through 8. And the book of Psalms chapter 100, chapter 105 and chapter 106. The book of Matthew chapter 26, verses 7 through 13. The book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 through 29. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 through 13, and Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 through 11. Now here's the explanation of the Passover meal. Before eating, send up a prayer to bless the food and drink. The Passover is to be celebrated with gladness and mirth. Music and games can be played for this festival celebration. No buying or selling is allowed on the Passover. Therefore, all foods must be purchased the day before. If possible, try to get off from work along with your children from school. These are days to be taken in order to honor the Most High. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. For seven days, starting with Passover, food with leaven must not be eaten. All leaven must be removed from your houses. Cakes with yeast or leaven. Bread with yeast or leaven. Yeast, baking powder, malt flour with yeast or leaven. Any products with yeast or leaven, for example, frozen pizza and some cereal. You can eat and drink rice, beans, meat and fish, fruit and vegetables, wine, orange juice, cornmeal, hectos, unbleached flour, maltos, milk, cheese, mayonnaise, ketchup, vinegar, noodles. The observation of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. All products containing leaven, yeast, or baking soda must be taken out of the household. The first and last days are holy convocations. Therefore, no buying or selling is permitted. And now the closing service. Have a small service beginning and ending with the reading of the Lord's Prayer. The book of Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Read the scriptures pertaining to the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The book of Leviticus chapter 23, verses 5 through 8. Before eating, send up a prayer to bless the food and drink. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is to be celebrated with gladness and mirth. This concludes the end of the celebration of the feast. So this is the entire Passover. And understand this thing, folks, with all of these high holy days, these are all rehearsing the righteous acts. The book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. And that's what keeping the Passover is. So no, we don't do any animal sacrifice. But before you begin to take the Passover, you must first purge out the leaven from your body. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 
purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. Or for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Leaven is sin and wickedness, and you must purge that out. Now, what's the best way to do it? Go on a three-day fast. Go get a sackcloth and pray to the Most High God, asking for complete forgiveness for your sins. All those demons that you have inside of you, repent to the Most High God. You betrayed the Most High. That was you that did it. And you need to take the time to purge that old leaven out of you before you partake in the Lord's Passover. The Lord kept the Passover. The book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 17. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Hamashiach, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. The Lord says that I will keep the Passover. So why do you guys believe that? Because Yahweh was sacrificed that you no longer have to keep the Passover. He kept the Passover. Ladies, this is what you're supposed to be looking like. Men, you should be wearing your fringes, have your staff. Women, have your hair covered, and you should be dressed modestly. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. You must be wearing a dress that's not showing off your figure. So today, we just went over the entire breakdown of the Passover. If you are a descendant of the Sub-Sahara and transatlantic African slave trade, as well as the Assyrian captivity, which ultimately brought Israelites over here to North America, you are a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are an Israelite that is scattered on all four corners of the earth. You're an Israelite, whether you like it or not, you're not just a Hebrew, you're an Israelite, and you are required to keep the Passover. And with that, Shalom. Shalom.